Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. In this video I'm going to go over the Special Controls tab, Special Equipment tab, and some uh, more advanced things you can do when you're making the flight controls for a fighter specifically. So if you're designing a fighter, this video will probably be pretty helpful for you. Uh, if you're not, then you don't really need to bother because you probably won't need to do this. Alright, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so you can see I've opened up the fighter I've been working on uh, from last time. I made a few of the changes, made the canopy a bit differently shaped just because I wasn't too heavy with how it turned out. Um, I positioned these engines a bit better, so it's kind of actually looking like a something like a flanker or a MiG-29 right now. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just really quickly, I'm going to go through all my wings here and I'm going to give myself control services so um, and one thing I'm going to do is when I'm making a fighter all of the control services on my wings I'm probably going to want to make them be ailerons of some sort for the most outboard parts I want aileron 1 and then for the inboard parts I usually make them be aileron 2 and I'll explain why this is in a little bit, um, but I think it should make sense to you once you see what I'm doing here. So, just going through assigning control services to individual elements, uh, pretty soon we should be off to the races here, and I'm going to make that be elevator 1 for now, I might change later, I'm not sure. Um, and I'm just going to make both of these entirely rudder. Uh, there we go. Now, for a fighter, um, I start with all of my deflection values uh, just at 20 degrees. Basically, no matter what, I just make it all 20. Uh, this is just a thing I do, personal choice. You can make it really whatever you want as long as it's reasonable. And now for my aileron 2, for now I'm going to actually give it, I'm going to give it a pretty small, maybe just 5 degrees of travel, because you will soon see that I can actually do a lot more with these control surfaces if they are ailerons. And so, because I'm having an all-moving tailplane, I don't actually need to enter a size for my elevator. I can just give it deflections, and there you go, see they're moving. Um, again, this is also important for a fighter, especially because the more area you have to deflect air, the more force you can exert on your airframe, and the more you can turn, or the, sorry, the quicker you can get it to turn. And when you're designing a fighter, uh, especially for maneuverability, the faster you can get it to change where it's pointing, the better it'll be in a fight, usually. That's not always the case, but usually that's true. Uh, so I'm just going to give myself some flap settings here. Um, I think 35 degrees will do fine. And I don't need to assign a size for my flaps, and I don't need to change what type of flaps I have, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, let me just create a rudder here. Oh, it's too big. Right, so got all my control services that I want for now set up. Now, when I'm making a fighter, it's very, very useful to use the special controls tab because when you're in here, there's a lot of really useful stuff you can do. So, so in the special controls tab, what you can do is if you give yourself ailerons instead of making flaps, you can make what's called flapperons or elevons. And an elevon is an, ele an aileron that also moves with your uh, pitch commands. So if I wanted, I don't know if I want to for this specific configuration just because I've got a horizontal stabilizer, but if you had a delta wing without a canard, let's say, you might want to consider allowing your ailerons to command pitch as well. So if I told my ailerons to command a 30 degrees, 
with pitch, uh, I would enter that here. So in these two. So ailerons 1 is for aileron 1, that's my outboard ones that I selected, and then 2 is obviously aileron 2, which is inboard. Uh, that's not what I want to do for this fighter. For this one, I want to make flapperons, and so I can tell X-Plane to make my ailerons move when I select flaps. So because the maximum value I had for flaps was 35 degrees, I'm going to say that aileron 2, which is that inboard one, remember, can move down 35 degrees with flaps. And it doesn't show you it in this visualization, but they will do that now. Uh, now the F-18, I believe, uh, also has its outboard ailerons droop down with the flaps. Um, if you want to do that, you can do that. It'll give you more lift at slow speeds, but I'm not going to do that just because I think this fighter will do fine without it. Oh, I just realized I forgot slats, and slats are going to be useful for me here, so I'm going to give myself leading edge slats on the entirety of the outboard section of my wing. Um, and I'm going to make sure those are slats, and give them 10 degrees of power. Okay, now, so the next thing you may want to consider doing in a fighter is giving your elevators, or your horizontal stabilizers, or canards, whatever they may be, the ability to command a roll as well. So when you command roll, what will happen is one of them will go down and one of them will go up, as well as whatever pitch input you have, and that gives you more control over your roll rate. And uh, I think 10 degrees is usually fine for this. If you want more, obviously you can, you can give yourself more. Um, another thing you may want to consider is thrust vectoring. Now, thrust vectoring is super, super helpful for making a really maneuverable fighter, because all the time in a fighter, your control services have to overcome uh, a lot of force coming from your engines, and your engines are trying their absolute darndest to make sure your plane is going forward very fast. If you can move where your engines are pointing, however, suddenly turning your plane becomes a lot easier. So under this section here, called Differential Thrust for Maneuvering, you can tell your aircraft to actually swing its engines round and round to help you move it around. So if you wanted your engines to pivot up when you input uh, a positive pitch deflection, you could say thrust vector with pitch input, maybe 10 degrees. Uh, the F-22 can do 20. It, it's really up to you. Uh, more, more degrees obviously means more pitch moment. Um, for this fighter, I'm going to guess that 15 will be fine. And then the next thing you want to do is you're going to say you're going to say full on at 90 at zero degree thrust vector selection. This so this means unless you're making a VTOL aircraft and you also have differential thrust, uh, you won't need to worry about the 90 degree thing. But when your engines are pointed at their normal direction, which they usually always will be, unless of course you're making a VTOL aircraft, they will move this much when you command it. Now you can also th so if you have two engines. Uh, some of you may choose to have one, some of you may choose to have two, but if you have two, you can also get them to point in alternating directions to give yourself even more roll authority. Uh, so again, you just input whatever value you like here and then select full on at zero degree thrust vector selection. You can also get your engines to swing side to side to give you even more yaw authority. Now this is really, really useful in a post-stall situation where there is absolutely zero air going over your flying surfaces and you don't have any control over your rudders because they're in the turbulent flow coming off the stalled wing. So if your engines can actually point where they're, they're they can point themselves in a post-stall situation, you can very, very easily recover from what might otherwise be uh, a very sticky end for you. So. I'll just say 15 degrees here, and then zero degree thrust vector selection. 
And so now I've got a pretty robust flight control setup for my fighter. Um, I'm going to estimate this is going to perform pretty well, just based on plan form, thrust to weight ratio and all that. And so with this specific control setup for a fighter, you can have way, way more maneuverability than if you were just, if you only had uh, like partial control services on your horizontal stabilizers, or if you only had outboard ailerons and you didn't have uh, an all-moving tail point that could also command roll if you didn't have thrust vectoring. And so that's great, but there are a few things you might want to consider to just kind of make it behave a little better. And you can find those under Expert and Special Equipment. And so there, there, there are a lot of things in here. Um, I'll try to cover some of them at least. Um, you won't need most of these for a fighter. Uh, we're mainly going to be looking up here and a little bit up down here. So all of these boxes that you can check will give your aircraft additional kind of special capabilities. So a lot of these are pretty obvious, like if you select this box, your speed brakes will automatically deploy when you touch down, and then automatic thrust reversers, automatic regular brakes. Um, so if you have a tailwheel, this will automatically lock it out when your elevator is at a position, and obviously these will auto set your uh, propeller fold and your propeller RPM. So one thing you might want to consider is gear and flap protection. So what these will do is they will lock out your landing gear from extending above a certain airspeed, and these will lock out your flaps from extending above their uh, maximum safe operating speed. Uh, I'm going to leave these unchecked just because I might want to use my flaps as maneuvering flaps to uh, kind of knock down my AOA a bit at some airspeeds. Um, but I am going to leave this checked just because it might be useful. And you can also automatically sweep your wings when you deploy flaps. You can automatically sweep your wings when you change where your engines are pointing. So this isn't this isn't um, the kind of thrust vectoring I've implemented here. This is for your thrust vectoring as in like F-35 Bravo or Harrier where your engine is actually like completely pointing like 90 degrees down so you can do a vertical takeoff or landing. Uh, cal flaps, I don't have those, I don't care about them. But now these, these three check boxes here are very, very useful. So if you want your fighter to be much more controllable at high angles of attack, much less like Harry to control, you may want to select either one of these. Uh, I'm going to do slats just because I don't want to bother with my flaps tearing themselves off at high airspeed. So I'm going to select auto slats and install AOA. And you can also have them automatically deploy below an airspeed. Um, I think that's pretty useful. So I'm going to say, you know what, if I'm going below 150 knots, those will automatically come out. Uh, so now, I'm just going to keep on going down this list. Auto trim pitch loads. Uh, this will make your aircraft a little bit easier to keep level if you want. Um, Anti-ice, obviously, and de-icing system. A resting gear, it's very useful. If you want your aircraft to be able to land and take off on an aircraft carrier, you need to check this box. Uh, okay, so then these are all speed warnings. So a transonic warning horn is a thing that will start yelling at you if you get close to the speed of sound. Um, in a fighter, you really don't need one of these unless you, like, are concerned about going supersonic if you have a certain wing setup or whatever, but I, I don't care about that, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And now, all engines, so the throttle governor is only really useful for a uh, helicopter. Now this one, auto sync if the throttles are close. If you've got a throttle quadrant that you're using to control your engines, with two separate levers, let's say, um, this is nice to have because if your levers are close but not exactly at the same position, uh, it'll sync up your N1s so that you don't have a thrust differential. Um, I actually do have a throttle quadrant like this, so I'm going to check that box. Next one is very important. Um, 
inverted fuel and oil systems, you definitely want this on a fighter because if you're pulling negative G's and you don't have this checked, there will be no way for fuel and oil to get to your engines. And obviously if you don't have fuel in your engines, uh, your engines don't work. So you want them to work if you're pulling negative G's or if you're upside down. So I'm going to check that. And now if you want your engines to reverse thrust, you check this. And then these are for propellers. So I don't have reverse thrust, I'm not going to worry about that. Now the next thing you want to consider is if you've selected this auto slats checkbox, you have to define where your stall angle of attack is, or where you want them to deploy if your aircraft can handle post-stall maneuvers. So to set where that is, or to set that uh, stall angle of attack, you need to go to standard and then viewpoint. And then down here, you have stall warn alpha. Alpha is angle attack, stall warn is where the warning horn will go off and where your automatic slats will deploy. So for this, um, I'm going to estimate, just based on my prior experience with this sort of plan form, that it will really start to get hairy at around maybe 30 degrees of angle of attack. Uh, you, you'd obviously have to flight test this first, um, but I'm just doing this for the sake of an example. Um, and yeah, so that's how you give yourself more advanced flight controls on a fighter. And I, I hope you found this helpful. Um, for some of you, this will definitely be very useful. So if you have any trouble at all with this sort of stuff, um, feel free to come over to office hours on a Friday and I will be happy to help you out. So yeah, uh, I'll see you next time, and I hope you have a good night.